Hi there, I'm Bunna, and this is my Grid Locked Arc series. The map has been divided into grids that can only be unlocked by completing certain milestones I've set for my character. Grids can be lost if I die and can't retrieve my items, or if I die in a boss fight. The series will end when I've either unlocked all of the grids, or defeated the Alpha Tier boss encounter. Hello there, everybody! Bunna here, and welcome back to some more Art Grid Locked. It has been a hot minute since the last episode. Uh, probably like two months or something like that. Uh, as many of you know, I got sidetracked heavily by the Art Quest video, which is now up on my channel if you haven't seen it yet. So please take the time to go check it out, because those Art Quest videos take an obscene amount of time and effort on my part to make, and it involves like script writing, and character creation, uh, voice acting, scene setup, design, and then of course like an endless amount of recording and editing. So if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. The ones of you that have watched it so far have left some like really good feedback, and it's gotten a lot of likes and stuff like that, so hopefully it was worth all the time and effort. But getting back into this series, I've got some things that I want to do. Uh, off camera, I did a whole bunch of stuff to get the base back up and running, because I had such a long hiatus that, like, this thing was just shut down. Like, my generator ran out of gas, so my fridges were off for, like, a brief period of time. Um, the feeding trough was empty, but nothing died, because I got on preemptively and, like, cryopotted everything and put it all in the fridge, that way it was safe. Um, luckily, they still have, like, a long timer in the fridge, uh, even if this isn't powered. It's got, like, 30 days, because this thing just charges them. So, nothing died, everything was fine. Um, the beehive was about the only loss. So this thing was gone, because it ran out of rare flowers, and then it reverted back into a queen bee, and then the queen bee just, like, eventually despawned. So, off camera, I went and did a bunch of stuff, I got more rare flowers, rare mushrooms, I obviously replaced the beehive by taming another queen bee, um, I got more propellant because I ran out of propellant for my item collector, so he is replenished. And I think that is about it. Outside of making an obscene amount of gasoline that I have, like, stockpiled now, so I'm good on that. Um, but yeah, I've pretty much just been getting things back on their feet. Everything is back up and powered. Um, I did try to place some lighting around my base, but I ran out of pearls. So, in this episode, I think we are going to go diving in the ocean at some point to get ourselves some pearls, but that's not, like, the only objective I've got. So in the process of making this beehive, I learned that I really want to make a domesticated beehive, and that requires 50 honey. So, inside this one, I think I can open this safely if I have ghillie gear on. Let's try it. No, so it still does damage me a little bit, but it's okay. So I've got, like, what? 20-something honey in here, probably, and then the rest is rare flowers. So, I would need a bunch more honey in order to make the domesticated one. I'm just weighing if it's, like, a good thing to do or not, or if it's just a waste of resources. So I'm looking on the wiki page now to see, like, what the major difference is. I, I'm pretty sure when you open this one, it doesn't damage you, regardless of your gear or whatever you're wearing. So it says, unlike the beehive, the S-plus domesticated beehive is crafted... When destroyed, it will not produce a giant queen bee. So, this kind of tells me that it never has the fear of going away. So, like, even if it ran out of rare flowers that are powering it, I don't think that it will disappear like my last one did. Which is really nice, because if I take, like, hiatuses from the server to make my tutorials and stuff, or if I'm making more art quest videos, then I don't have to worry about coming back and missing my beehive. So, I think... The domesticated beehive is a goal for this episode. And I of course want to make a bunch more propellant for inside the item collector here, because I want to make sure that this thing is running like 24-7. Uh, speaking of which, I can probably start throwing my snails back out, because I still have them cryopotted. But before I do that, check this shit out, okay? Even though this ran out of propellant, it was running for a long time because we had, like, over 100 propellant or something in there. Which means that it was gathering Akatina paste that entire time. So look at this. BOOM! Akatina paste problem fucking solved! Look how much! And then this one! BOOM! Look how much! It's just insane. So I'm not, like, in a giant rush to get the snails back out. That is more than enough that I'm gonna need for, like, any time soon. 
unless I start getting some really good blueprints where it takes a lot of pace for stuff. But for right now, I, I think I'm just going to leave them potted up, and then uh, maybe when I get the domesticated beehive, then I'll put them back out, because then I can start making tasty cakes. But this honey is going to go to that new domesticated beehive that we were just talking about. Alright, so here's what I think we're going to do. I'm going to grab some med brews. I'm going to grab myself some of my bunna bites. My special food that we made. Pretty sure it didn't all expire. There it is right there. We will grab ourselves some bug repellent. And, um, maybe I will make myself a cactus broth. I don't know if it actually does anything in this case. But my idea here is, I'm just gonna go out and just loot beehives. Because you get about five honey per beehive that you just loot, and then I can just combine it with what I have here to make the domesticated version of that beehive. That's my plan. But I'm gonna try a cactus broth. Um, if I don't use it here, then I'm definitely gonna use it in the ocean, so I don't see any reason not to. So let's type it in. Cactus bra, I think we have all that stuff. Let me try pulling like enough for five. And yeah, I think we're good. Because off camera, uh, one of the other things I did that I forgot to mention is I made a bunch of feeding troughs over here. Because I had to make my piggies produce a bunch of poop. And this thing has like fucking 40,000 health or something. Yeah, this one's got 31,000. This one's got like 90,000. And so I had them drained. And they needed a ton of food. So I made additional feeding troughs, and then I just took Brevin out and just, like, clear-cut the fucking forest. So I was hoping that this would be enough food for them. It looks like they emptied one trough, and they fucking drained a couple of the other ones, too. Wow. Yeah, they plowed through that food. But luckily I have all those berries on hand, so I can just, like, pull and easily make these cactus broth, which is super convenient. Okay, why didn't it make any more? Oh, it made energy brews. Oh, shit. Okay, I had the fucking stimulants in here. Let's take those out. Let's search cactus broth again. Let's pull enough for five more. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna use this stuff, so I'm not, like, really worried about using up my resources. I need this. And cactus sap is basically free, because it just produces it passively inside this tap that uh, I emptied whenever I started the episode. And so I've just been kind of, like, throwing it in here. Um, I already made a bunch of it into cactus sap, but the thing is, cactus sap expires, even in the fridge, like, it's it, it's gonna expire at some point, whereas this, the regular sap, doesn't. So I've just been, like, pulling it into here, and just leaving it, and then if I need it, I can craft it into cactus sap in the conversion table. Alright, so we're not gonna need six, I'm gonna put, like, four of them in the fridge, and then, uh, I'll keep the bug repellent, we don't need these. Let me ditch the stimulants. And then about the only other thing I might do is take some fiber and hide with me, and some organic polymer. Just so I can repair my ghillie gear whenever I need to, and I don't have to worry about it shattering on me. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to take damage if this uh, cactus broth and stuff doesn't work the way I think it's going to work. So, I want to be prepared. Alright, Mr. Xavier. Time for a little ride, dude. Let's go get ourselves some honey. Holy shit, is it bright out here. Um, I did have my gamma cranked up. That's a little better. Okay, we, we can roll with this. Oh, there's a Megatherium! Oh, what level are you, dude? 140?! Fucking hell, we gotta take that. Okay, plan's kind of changing a little bit here. We gotta take that. Um, it's not a grid, because it's not 145 plus, but we have got to start our Megatherium army, so plan's slightly changing. Um, I did rewind wipe my character after we crafted that thing last episode, my, uh, my custom food. And so he's got his stats kind of back the way they were, but I once again have to learn, like, everything over again. So if you're wondering why I'm pouring through the list of things to make, that is why. Alright, so we are going to be building a Megatherium trap. And I have built these before on official servers. They're pretty easy to make, um, if I remember how to do it right. So we're going to make four stone foundations. Let's pull for that. Hopefully I have all the resources in here and I don't have to go, like, gathering a bunch of shit. And then we're going to need a couple wooden ramps. Um, probably four of those as well. But I'll wait till these are done crafting. And if you guys want to use this trap, it actually works really, really good. Um, so if you see me build this, you can learn how to build it pretty easy. I think there's also videos and stuff online on how to do it. But it's super convenient for trapping and taming Megatherium. And because we're using S+, you can just take all this stuff with you, and then just pick it up when you're done and, like, move it to another place. Alright, and now we're gonna need, like, I think 16 of these? 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 14, yes, yeah, 16. 16 of the doorways. 
I did not have enough of something. What don't I have enough of? Wood! Really, I would not have thought that would have been the bottleneck. Um, I can probably get ourselves some wood. Let's do this. Five minutes later. I should be able to do this. And then we need 15 of these now. Pull. Boom! Still didn't have quite enough for all of them, but that's okay. Alright, so that's ten. We need six more. What is our bottleneck? Oh! Okay, I had enough. I don't know why it didn't just pull all the resources needed at once, but okay. Okay, Trank darts, Trank arrows, I've got some narcotics. Uh, let's see. Rifle, there it is. Okay, I'll probably use my crossbow for a good bit of this tranking because it's a lot higher damage and I think it would trank it faster. But I think that's all we need. Um, yeah, I'm just actually just going to go down. I'm going to leave Xavier up here so he's not in danger. And we should be good to go. I think that's it right there. How you doing, dude? Oh, that's a level 50. That's not him at all. Um, let's see. There we go. 140. All right. So we might need to take care of this dude. Because it's going to try to murder our faces whenever we start shooting this one in the face. So let's maybe... Let me get rid of some weight here and we'll just kill it with Xavier real quick. Okay. You gotta love it when we establish a plan at the beginning of the episode and then nothing goes according to plan. It's pretty much the way that every single Arc Gridlocked episode works. I need you to bite this thing in the ass enough until it dies. There we go! Alright, and then we'll give you some meat that way you heal up nice. Okay. Okay, I think we're good here. Now let's see where this thing is at again. He's up there, that's perfect. I'm just gonna walk off and parachute because I'm too lazy to climb down a ladder. And now, we assemble the trap. And I'm thinking we can probably just do it like right here. It's better to do it in a flat spot. Maybe I should do it up here and then I have like a nice view of them. But the nice thing is, these guys really aren't, like, crazy aggressive, I don't think. I'm pretty sure you can walk right next to it and it won't hurt you until you shoot it in the face. Alright, so we'll start by placing four foundations in a little square, just like this. And then we gotta do door frames, too high, all the way around. Like this. And so that way you can shoot through the door frames, but it can't get to you because it's too fat. Okay, and then once you have that in place, now you have to attach ramps leading into it, because what we're going to do is, like, run up the ramps and through the door frame, and it's going to chase after us. It'll come up after us like this, and then when it drops, it gets stuck, and then we can just keep going. And so that's the way to trap it. So probably what I'm going to do is come up here. I'm going to go ahead and get out my rifle, or, or my crossbow, rather. And where'd you go, dude? Bada-boom! Give him a little plank. We need to get him up the hill. There we go. Oh my god, is he mad? Oh my god, he is so mad. Woo! 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 Got him! Holy shit! Wow! Dude, you were so fast! Okay, but if he breaks the ramps, that's fine. He, he can't get out now. He is trapped in there, so... I'm just gonna work on shooting this dude with some tranks. Is he damaging the stone? I hope he's not damaging the stone. I'm pretty sure that's just the... I don't think he can damage stone, can they? I've definitely used stone before to trap them, and it's worked fine. So, I'm really hoping that that's just the wood numbers. The first Megatherium here, people. This is a big moment, okay? I know it's not a new grid, but, like, having high-level Megatheriums is the only way that we're going to win this series. And they are, like, so impossible to find. So this is huge! fucking huge for the series. And after we get this guy knocked out, I think I might try to seal this in real fast, because if an Argent or something flies by, it might attack it. I don't know if they'll attack an unconscious Megatherium, but we want to be safe about it, you know? Two hours later. I gotta be careful that I don't hit it after it falls unconscious, because that would not be good. I would really hate for a high-level Megatherium like this to be damaged afterwards. 
Bada boom. You gonna go out here, dude? You gonna go out? Huh? 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 Should I just tease it? Yes! Okay! We got it! Okay, it is out. Um, I probably should rush and try to seal this thing in now. Um, even thatch is fine, so maybe I'll just pull out my tools real quick, and I will just try to make some thatch shit to box it in. Okay, I might actually have enough wood from those couple swings to just seal them in with wood, so... We need the S plus wooden ceiling. There we go. We'll make four of these. And then thatch doors, probably. Um, I probably should just do wood doors, really, but, you know. See, and then when you're done, bada-boom! You just seal the whole trap in, and then that way they're safe from any predators. And we need 16 wooden doors. Not necessary, by any means. I think it's gonna be okay, but I'm just being on the safe side, because high levels are so rare to come by on this server, as I've told you guys a million times. I really don't want to screw it up unless something, like, really bad happens, you know? I mean, the chances of finding a high level next to my base like this is almost astronomical. Because they only spawn in the Redwoods and, uh, to the northern part of the map in, like, the Winter Zone, which I don't even have unlocked yet. So I was fully expecting not to find any high levels for a good long while. But this little female right here, she might be the start of our breeding pair. We'll see. Alright, we'll just put some doors on this puppy here. Snap them in place. Please don't swing your fist accidentally. Ark likes to do Ark things. You know how it is. Boom, 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 and... Boom. Okay. And now we can enter the trap. Its torpor's good. I honestly don't think I'll even need to torpor this thing up. Um, but favorite food-wise, I think they take giant bee honey. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm actually gonna look it up real quick. Okay, Megatherium wiki page. Here we go. Let's scroll down. Preferred food is giant bee honey. Um, I don't know how much it's gonna eat, but we have a ton up there in the beehive, and I'm almost positive that's gonna be more than enough. So, let's look at its food level. It's not even down a hundred yet. I might let it starve a little bit. So, while it's starving down, why don't we go ahead and pick bee honey, like we talked about doing, and then, uh, after we get all the domesticated beehive made, then maybe we'll just take the extra honey that we have and put it on this to tame it instantly. So off camera, in order to get that queen bee, I actually come over to this tree and built up to it, and I was hitting it with Athena, and then, uh, I remembered Brevin damages beehives like crazy. So I just brought Brevin down, and I just stood, like, way back with him and tail swiped the fuck out of it until it broke, and then I went and tamed a queen bee. But, I just left this in place because I figured I might need it to gather the honey up here. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put on insect repellent. I'm going to put on cactus broth. And we're going to have both of those things running. I'm also going to have my med bruise ready so I can heal up if I need to. And I'll probably get out my pike. And let's see. Gather honey. Boom! We didn't even get hit! Okay, gather honey. Gather honey. Gather honey. Oh my god, look at this, people! This is awesome! And I'm almost positive, too, if you don't have this stuff running, I think you get hit. So, this is really good. Alright, let's see how much honey we have. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. 25 honey, alright. We're definitely gonna need more, but let's go up to the base real quick and see how much we have up there. Oh, hello, Argent. Level 10. Okay, that, that's about the normal levels that I've been seeing. Oh yeah, you guys might have noticed my greenhouse is blown apart too. I have no idea what happened here. Um, I actually mentioned it in the other recording that I did quote-unquote off-camera. I think that like an alpha raptor or something must have attacked it. And I don't know why, because there's no reason to attack it. But yeah, when I log back in it was just kind of like broken. But the crops and everything are fine. So it was just like the greenhouse. It's really weird. Alright, so let's see how much honey we got in here. Um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 20... We have enough! Okay! So let's just go in here. I think I have to learn it still. Um, I typed that wrong. I typed it wrong again. There we go. 
Domesticated Beehive. And now if we go under the crafting menu, and we click on it, and we pull one, BOOM! Domesticated Beehive, everybody! That's what I'm talking about! Holy shit, this thing takes a really long time to craft. Wow! That's gotta be like the longest crafting I've seen for something. So while it's crafting, I also noticed something else uh, on the wiki page here. It says that it uses one fuel every hour. And so I'm pretty sure that means one rare flower every hour. Which is absolutely fucking insane. Like, this would last forever. There is no way that the, uh, the vanilla version lasts that long. Let's actually look it up. Let's do Arc Beehive. Let's take a look here, because it should say how much it needs. It uses one flower every four hours. So, <laughs> so one every four hours, or one every 24 hours. Like, the domesticated beehive is the obvious choice, as long as you have the resources to make it. So what I might actually end up doing, since we have to wait on the Megatherium anyways, I might just go gather enough honey to make another domesticated beehive, and then just get rid of this one. And then we'll just have two domesticated ones that pretty much will never run out of fuel. Because, I mean, look at the rare flowers I have in this one alone. And, like, I have a fuck ton more over my fridge. So, they'll just last forever. Okay, we got it! Let's see. Um, domesticated beehive. boop a da boop We will just plop that dude down right here. Okay. And it shouldn't damage me when I open it, but, um... I mean, I'm wearing the, uh, the ghillie, and I got bug repellent and everything, so it actually wouldn't tell me. Now, something I am noticing here is that the vanilla beehive has 45 slots, whereas the domesticated one only has 24. So, the fuel lasts a lot longer, but it's not going to accumulate nearly as much honey. So that's something we got to keep in mind. We actually might want to end up getting, like you know, three or four of these beehives just to compensate for the lack of space that they have. Oh god, I'm getting like a big lag spike here or something. Big old lag spike. What, what, what's lag? Ah, oh, there we go, okay. Alright, so it's powered up. It's doing its thing. Um, I might actually take this honey out. And I might go loot another couple beehives real quick. And then we'll throw it on the Megatherium and see how far it gets us. And then the rest I will use to try to make another domesticated beehive. Alright, so how quickly can you pick the same things? Can I come up here and get... No, ten minutes. Okay, so they're, they're on a definite cooldown. Um, I might actually... You know, if I build around this tree... And I could probably just leave these beehives here, and then I always have access if I need some on a pinch. I mean, more than likely, once I get this domesticated ones up and running, like, I probably won't need it, but still. It'd be kind of nice to have access to these. Alright, so we're gonna try what I was talking about. We've got, uh, let me see, I need fiber. Do I have my sickle? I do. Oh my god, that makes it so much easier. Okay. And then we're gonna make, like, four of these or so. And we'll give this a shot. Can't move. I'm too fat. Alright, let's see. Let's snap this dude right here. Snap this one right here. Snap this one right here. You guys see where I'm going with this. Make a few more. I don't know how much farther I can extend. Oh, that's it. Okay, so I need to put a couple pillars coming down here. I did make some pillars, but I don't know if this is going to be enough. I might need to make a few more. Okay, let's see. Pillar. And... Pillar! Okay. Now we should be able to extend that platform over a little bit more, and then hopefully I can just pick myself some more honey here. Bada boom, bada bam, bada boom, bada bam, bada bop. 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 All right, I've still got all my buffs running, so I should be good. Gather honey, gather honey, gather honey. Oh my god, this is so easy, guys! Arc is so easy. Gather a little more. I got one more prompt in there. Come on, there we go. Okay. We just got a bunch. Uh, there might even be one more in there that I can take from, but this is certainly enough to tame the Megatherium, and I might actually be enough to make another beehive. I'm not sure. Alrighty, dude. Can I access you from out here? No, I can't. I gotta get inside. Hopefully, this just tames you all the way up. So, I don't want to lose any levels here, so we're gonna type in B, and we're just gonna transfer all. Boom. Oh, look at it go! 
25%, so it's only gonna take like four honey. Holy shit, look at that. Perfect tame. Alright, so I don't know the stats of this, we still have to check it out. Um, for right now, I'm just gonna name it... Just to give it a placeholder. And then uh, I need to take a look at this after I disassemble this trap that I built. But let's get the rest of the honey off of her, because I don't want to just, like, waste it if she's eating it. Um, and it was 31, which means that we still need another 20 honey in order to make another domesticated beehive. So, I might just come down here real quick, since I already have this platform going, and I might just keep wrapping around this same tree, and pick the rest of the honey that I need so we can get another beehive made. We're doing it, people! We're making some headway here. We're getting beehives made, we tamed a megatherium that I still gotta check the stats of it, and then next up, as long as we still have time, I would still like to go diving for those pearls. Man, I missed this. You know, I spent the last two months working on that Ark Quest video, and I just missed the Gridlock series. This is just so much fun, you know? Setting goals, being restricted by the map, and then achieving said goals like a fucking boss. Bada boom, bada bam. Need a little bit more wood. Another pillar, and then I think that we can probably get around to the other beehives. You know, at this point, it probably would have been cheaper to, like, make a platform and slap the platform underneath of these beehives. If you could put it this low, that is. If you could do that, I'd be so fucking pissed. Okay, one there. And just for safety's sake, we'll probably attach a couple here just to widen it out a little bit. There we go. Maybe one more here. One more here would probably do good, too. Okay, gather honey. Gather honey. Okay, yes, yeah, so I see. My buffs ran out. And now whenever I'm looting the beehive, I'm taking, what, 30 damage? Yeah, 30 damage every time I loot. So let's go ahead and pop... Let's test it. Let's do a bug repellent only. And then we'll gather. Okay, I didn't take damage. So you don't need a cactus broth. You just need a uh, insect repellent. Which I probably could have just looked up on the wiki page. I'm sure the information is, like, readily available. But some things I kind of like to figure out on my own. You know? Okay, I think that is all of those picked. We've got a bunch. I'm pretty sure that is more than 50, so we should be good. And then now, we're gonna have two domesticated beehives, plus we have access to all of these if I need honey in a pinch. So I am no longer worried about the honey situation. Okay, once more back up in the base. Let's go ahead and grab this. Pull enough for one. And sit here for an fucking eternity. But anyways, yeah, I briefly mentioned that I started putting up lights in the base, because a couple episodes back you guys suggested that I definitely should put lights up in here, which I think is an awesome idea. But I got almost all of them up, except for, I think, one of them? Um, oh no, I remember what it was. I got all the lights up, but I ran out of electrical wiring. And so I'm, I'm doing, like, the internal wall wiring the whole way around, because this light, I think it is, doesn't light up. Uh, but I ran out of pearls, and it takes pearls to make those. So I made the attempt to go get pearls, but I went, like, horribly prepared. I forgot my chair, um, I forgot some pieces of scuba gear, I didn't take cactus broth, so there was, like, plesiosaurs everywhere. So I just bailed on the idea, and ended that part of the recording, and then just figured, you know what, I'm just gonna do this all a different day, when I'm not making so many mistakes. But hey, you wanna know what's not a mistake? Going down below and pressing that like button, if you're enjoying the video so far. Because it helps me out a ton, and I really appreciate it, guys. Okay, domesticated beehive number two, all done. Um, I think I might actually go ahead and just destroy this one, because it is obviously obsolete. So, let's do that. Let's demolish. And I'm going to obtain a beehive so that we have it on hand, just in case we need it for the future. But this is going to take precedence. Boom! Look at that! Domesticated beehive? Let's go ahead and fill it up with, like, 500 rare flowers. And wait, is it doing the same thing? So maybe it's not lag. Maybe it's just, like, whenever you first place these things down, it just takes a minute to, like, register that it exists. I don't know, it's weird. Really weird. Five minutes later. It's just, like, straight up not letting me access still. It's very strange. Do I gotta, like, maybe, like, walk away and, then, like, come back? Watch out! No, it didn't work. It's not even letting me access my other one right now. Can they not be within close proximity to one another? Is that a thing? 
I mean, I know they're, they're supposed to, like, water plants, so, like, they have a watering range to them. Am I not allowed to have two next to each other? Let's maybe try picking this up, and then can I access this now? I can, okay. So maybe you can't have two that close together. That's weird. Um, what if I moved it? What if I put it over on this side? Is that still too close? Uh, well, rename it? What the fuck? What? I don't want to rename it. Okay. Um, huh. Five minutes later. Let's try this again. Let's place it down. Yeah, it, it won't let me access the inventory. And I bet you it locked me out of this one now, too. It did. So weird. All right, so maybe you can't have two beehives, guys. You must only be able to allow to have, like, one. Wait, hang on. Now it's not letting me. Okay. Alrighty then. That is so unbelievably strange. Uh, I'm just gonna place this down. And, um, I would like to get flowers in it. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, there we go. Okay, all right. Flowers. Get in there. Perfect. And then we're just gonna fucking leave it. Like, even if I can't access these, I can pull the honey using S+. So I'm not worried about it from this point forward. It was just getting the fucking flowers inside it. Man, they are buggy. There is something buggy with them. Wait a minute. And then all this extra honey, I might as well go ahead and make into tasty cakes, because I don't need it for anything right now. So let's look up uh, vegetable, um, there we go. And I'll go ahead and put all the giant bee honey in here, and then hopefully we have the rest of the stuff that I can just pull. There we go. Craft all those. Looks like I'll be getting ten of them, so I can probably pull for another five. There we go. Oh, okay, we got some sweet veggie cakes again. Perfect. And then I'll just throw these in the fridge. And now, we need to go check out that Megatherium, because I want to look at its stats. Alright, so probably the easiest thing to do is just to pod this girl up, and just put her up in my base, and then I'll check her stats up there. Because I also need to pick up this whole base, like I talked about. And I might even make, like, a little box up in my base, uh, just so that... How do you... How do you change things here again? Um, let's see, hold, reload to open up the menu, okay. There we go, and we're gonna go to structure, okay. Yes, pick up, okay. Pick up, pick up. I'm still getting used to this new S plus thing that they changed. It's very strange to me. I also don't even remember what I was saying. I think I was saying that I'm gonna take her up in the base and check her stats, and uh, I want to make a box to put all this stuff in, so that when we tame more Megatheriums in the future which we are definitely going to be doing, I can just quickly grab all of this stuff, and it is ready for us to take. I guess I can't pick these up because she damaged them, but that's okay. You know, it's kind of nice that they have the outline that goes around objects now. That definitely makes things a lot safer in my mind, because before, anytime I would point at something, I would always question if it would, like, pick it up or demolish it, you know? This is nice because it shows you what it's about to do before it even does it. Okay, let's pull the stuff for a storage box. And I'll go ahead and make one of those. Not enough resources. I need wood. Are you serious? I have no wood? Disappointed! Alright, well I just threw it all in here for right now, and I'll get the wood here in a couple minutes. But I want to plop down this Megatherium and check out her stats. Ah. Okay, everybody, I went and downloaded the Arc Smart Breeding Tool. So this thing right here. And this is what I would always use to check the stats of creatures that I would tame, especially on official servers, like where we're trying to, like, breed PvP mounts. Or if you've got, like, a nice, friendly server that you're on where you're trying to get the best stats out of things. This is the best tool that I have found, and it was something that a buddy of mine introduced me to early on, because I always used Dodo decks before I found out about this. Uh, but this I found to be a lot more accurate and a lot easier to use in a bunch of ways. And it looks like they just had a big update too where they even have like images of the dinos and stuff, which is pretty sweet. So we're going to open up her inventory, take a look at her stats. I haven't invested any feet points yet, obviously. So we're just going to plug in all of her values under Megatherium. And then it should tell us where she allocated her points at. So if I come up here to the drop down and I type in... Mega, it should pop up, Megatherium, and it's just the plain version, so Megatherium, and you can see there's the picture, so if you, like, make a mistake or you're not sure about the name of something, 
at least you can compare the picture and know what you're doing. So, looking at her health, she has, and you can see it right to the right of the tool, 6512.1. So, what we're going to do first is put in her level right now, which is 209, and she is tamed, so you'd have tame checked. And then we will do 6512.1, and then you basically just go down the list and type in all of her stats as you see them. And if you've put points into her, and you still want to, like, find out later where she allocated points, you can still do it. It tells you how many she put in innately, and how many you invested on your own. Which is pretty sick. And so this part I messed up because I was talking wasn't paying attention. So her melee is 296.3, speed's 100%, and torpidity is 13,480.5. I think that is everything. So provided I put this in correctly, I'm just going to double check real fast. Yep, if we do extract level distribution, boom. Wow. So she has 39 points into health, 33 in stamina, 21 in oxygen, 32 in food, 34 in weight, 30 in damage, 19 in speed. So she is actually a really good Megatherium. She put a lot of points into health. Uh, usually whenever I would breed stuff, I would shoot for stats in the 40s. So if I found like a 40 stat health, I would try to breed it with a 40 stat damage and then maybe a 40 stat weight. And you just keep trying to breed those until you get a breeding pair with all of the stats and then you can pump them out. But she's got 39 in health, which is really solid. So she actually might end up being my breeding female. So probably what I'll do is I will just change her name to Breeder. And then we'll do female, and then we'll just say 39 HP. That way we know how much she has. Okay? And that is pretty much it. We're just gonna leave her for the time being, and as we start to accumulate more Megatherium, we can start breeding our army to take on the boss fight. There is not much point of me leaving her in the base, because I don't want to risk her dying, so I'm gonna go ahead and pot her up, we'll put her in the fridge, and we just know that we have an awesome breeding female that we are starting our army with. Well, so far, this episode has been crazy successful. I really couldn't be happier with the way things are turning out so far. Like, this is awesome! Look at this. The base is back up and running. We've got two sweet beehives pumping it out. We got a breeding female Megatherium. Things are going our way for once! This is looking good! So the last thing that I want to do in this episode is go get some pearls in the ocean. Like I said, I tried to do it off-camera before, and uh, it didn't go so well. I, I just forgot too many things. I didn't end up dying or anything like that, but I was in there for a long time, and I eventually just bailed on the idea because I just forgot some key things that I'm remembering to do now. So hopefully we won't make the same mistake again, and we can just go there, get a bunch of pearls, and then finish all this lighting inside our base. Okay, I'm going to leave my good tools. Um, I think I'm going to leave probably my crossbow, because I don't want to take my really good crossbow with me. I'm not going to have a need for it. Same thing with the pike. And I will probably just take basic tools with me. That way, if I have to have a pick, a hatchet, or a crossbow, I have them. Um, I can even take this crossbow, because I've got extra. But yeah, like the pick and the hatchet, I, I want to have those tools, just in case I need them. But otherwise, I don't want to, like, risk losing my good stuff, you know? Okay, got the basic tools. I actually had to go get wood, because I didn't have any wood to make them. Which means I can now make that storage box I talked about too before we go. Because I do want to have that stuff, like, ready to go if we find a Megatherium. I don't want to be, like, sorting around for it. I want to just be able to, like, grab it and dart to where we need to go and be set. So for right now, we're just going to slap it down right here. We're going to rename it and we will just call it Megatherium Taming Box. There we go. And then now we can just dump everything in there, so as soon as we need it, we can grab it and go. Alright, last thing we need before we go get pearls is some cactus broth. So I'm gonna grab this, and I'll probably grab one extra one. Uh, just in case we need it. I've got my chair. I've got my scuba gear. I'm pretty lightweight. I've got basic tools. I think we are all set.
Oh my god, that's a 145 trike that I just spyglassed. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, I have to. I can't not. I I can't fucking not. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't be mad. It's a free grid. I should be super excited about this. <laughs> but it was like at the end of the episode. I just wanted to grab some pearls. I was going to end stuff. I wasn't even going to spyglass it. I was going to fly right by it and keep going. And I was like, you know what? I probably, I probably should look. And then I looked and I found it. And that's how it happened. You know, at least it's a trike, though. Like, a trike is an easy tame. Easy tame. Shouldn't give us any issues at all. So, knock the thing out, shove some berries in its throat, we'll be fine. Okay, let's get ourselves the good crossbow again. <laughs> Didn't think we were gonna need it. Um, trank arrows, trank darts, rifle, and um, probably just Athena. Because I can use her to get berries. And I think that should be good. Five minutes later. Okay. We are back in the area. I think that was him right there, actually. Let's stop. Spyglass, little dude. Okay, 145 female Triceratops. Um, let me think of the best way to do this, because we can't shoot it in the head. Otherwise, it won't take much damage. So I probably want to get up here, maybe. And then hopefully I can shoot down on it. We'll try that. That may or may not work, but we'll, we'll see. I can hop up here, maybe even like tag it with the rifle and then lure it over here. All right, there it is up there. Aim a little bit high. Did that hit? Oh my god, that actually hit? Wow! I am fucking awesome! So yeah, it only does like three damage to the head, so there's like no sense of shooting it in the head. I might as well just wait till it gets right here, and then I can just shoot it with Trank Arrows from above. There it is, right there. Okay. Trank Arrow. Yes! I'm actually not sure how many Trank Arrows this is going to take. I think it can take quite a few. Okay, yeah, this isn't working just per Ark's mechanics, so I'm going to have to, like, change my strategy here a little bit. Um, let's see, maybe we should just, like, land and Trank and then fly away. Land and Trank and fly away, and we'll just try that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it knows about me. It knows about me. Okay, I might, I might, why am I moving? Xavier! Xavier, are you nudging me? Stop nudging me! I think it's already starting to run. And it's not just because it can't get to me, I think it's actually getting low. I probably should stop, actually, because it, oh! Okay, okay, it's swimming. <laughs> I thought that it passed out there. Alright, we're gonna get over here. Maybe I can get a side shot in. Yep, uh-huh. Okay, we're just going to pursue, because it's full on... Yes! Look at that! Okay. Alright, and I think this is a pretty safe area. So I shouldn't have to worry about predators too much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plop down Athena, and we will get him some berries. Athena! I call upon your services once more! Okay, I think I've already got plenty. I'm not even going to bother gathering anymore. Um, she is on passive, which is good. Let's go ahead and take these narco berries. Pretty sure I'm not even going to need them, but just in case, I'm going to narc this thing up. And I might as well go ahead and throw all the measure berries on, so that it can start taming. Oh yeah, it's already at 7%. It, I don't think it's going to need any narco berries. This was probably the easiest 145 that we've tamed. Damn close to it. I mean, we're like, built up to the point now where we have everything we need. We just need to like, grab it and do it. So this was super straightforward. I honestly couldn't tell you what the fuck I'm gonna do with this thing, but, you know, it's a free grid, and we'll take those. Alright, Athena, let's pod you up, and then the plan for the pearls is still a go. Like, we're so close now to the ocean, and we have to wait for this thing to tame. I'm gonna go ahead and dive down and grab him real quick, and it can just tame in the background. Oh, you know, there is a fucking Sarko and stuff here. Oh, man. Oh, maybe I shouldn't go anywhere. I don't know. Alright, let's maybe kill the Sarko, and then maybe I'll put spikes around that trike real quick. Okay, we got it dead. We will grab some hide off of it real quick. That way we can make the spikes. See, this is why I brought tools. You never know what you're gonna get into, so it's always nice to have a set of tools on you. Just bada boom bada bam. Bada boom bada bam. 
god, I'm doing the fat walk. Oh. Okay, and we will just seal this little dude in just like that. Done. Okay, it is taming. Pearl mission is a go once more. I think I'm gonna go over here to this rock, and we're gonna dive from this side. Uh, I think it's actually closer to some pearls than uh, than that way is. Like, there's where I get my oil, but here is closer to pearls. Alright, and Xavier, you should be safe up here. I'm gonna go ahead and put Athena inside, and I might as well put my tranking stuff inside Xavier, because I don't need to take that with me. Um, I do have my good crossbow, which I think I'm gonna leave as well, just because I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna need it. Um, I'm just gonna be diving for pearls, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna leave it. Go ahead and hop off. Might as well leave my canteen. I don't need it. And a parachute. Don't need that. Let's slap on our scuba. Let's eat ourselves some cactus broth. And here we go! Woohoo! So after diving in that eastern cave, I feel pretty safe. Even though there is an alpha shark right there. Um, we're, we're fine. Nothing's gonna aggro us, I'm pretty sure. So, as long as we don't, like, swim up against something and piss it off, we should be good. And even then... We're so fast in the water, we can probably outswim most anything, except an alpha. I see some pearls! So far, this is vastly more successful than my last trip. That's actually a pearl cave in there too, so that's super convenient because we can just go in there and walk on land and pick them up, so this is working out just fine so far. Um, I do want to look behind me. No, we're good. We're, we're, we're doing good. Right, now, this stuff I gotta be careful with. If I get hit by these, uh, these Ammonites, that's gonna lure creatures in, and I don't know if it overrides, uh, our Cactus Broth, so I do want to be careful about that. Also, these pearls are fucking huge! Why are these pearls so fucking big? Right, like I said, please, please don't ink. Please don't ink. Okay, I, I think even if they do, I don't think that it draws anything in unless you hit them. Like that right there, that ink. I don't think that affects you unless you hit them and then swim into it. So, we, we should be okay. Oh, there's a plesiosaur out there. Good thing we got cactus broth. And Pearl Cave. Look at that. You know, it's always so concerning swimming up into one of these on a, uh, an official server. Because people always have bases with turrets and these fucking things. And every time I go to enter, I'm just always, like, scared that as soon as I swim in, I'm just gonna get nuked. So check this out, too. We were dying because of the cold in the ocean, but because of the Bonobites, look at us healing up! Look at us go! It's just soaring. Oh my god, there's so many fucking pearls. This is awesome. Oh, there's an XP booster! Sick! Hey, I'll take it. These last 10 levels are going to be a pain in the ass. Speaking of which, I think the best way to get these last levels is probably to take a Megatherium into the, uh, the cave in the Redwoods. There's like a gas swamp cave in there, and uh, the XP is absolutely insane. It's actually how I hit max level on official servers, because I tamed a Megatherium, I got myself a gas mask, and I went in there and just leveled up on the bugs like crazy. And uh, it's super quick and efficient, but it still takes a good while to do it. Um, I don't think I yet have that grid unlocked, and I also want to get, like, a bread Megatherium in order to do it, because I don't have a good saddle, and I don't want to risk the Megatherium that we just tamed, because she has such good health, and I don't want to risk losing her. Oh my god, it's a loot crate! What?! Oh, the chances of finding this! This is awesome! Okay, alright. Let's, let's loot it. Let's see. Oh my god! Yeah, we'll fucking take that! That is an awesome Ascendant Shotgun Blueprint! We gotta check that out whenever we get back to land, but um, I don't want to, like, stay in one place for too long. I trust the Cactus Broth, but uh, there's a lot of dangerous shit in the ocean that I just don't want to, like, lower my guard for, you know? I think we're probably set on pearls now, so I'm gonna head back to Xavier. Uh, we're gonna check on the trike to see if it tamed, and then I think we're gonna head back to base. I can't believe we found a red loot crate down there. That's crazy. I actually forgot that there was even a spawn in that location. And, and the chances of a loot crate being in that spawn is like string to none. Because there's a bunch of different places that they can be at. So we like, we not only we lucked out on the location and the timing, 
but also on the blueprint that we got. Like, that is insane. Okay, Mr. Xavier. We have made it back. What a successful mission. Let's go check on the trike, dude. Am I about to see green text? I hope I'm about to see green text on my screen. Ah, uh, not quite. Not tame yet. Okay, nothing killed it, right? Let's make sure. No, it's still alive. Okay, it just didn't tame yet. All right, let's take a little gander. Let's pick this guy up. How you doing? Okay, 67%. So it, it's still got a little bit to go. That's okay. Well, we're pretty much just going to play the waiting game here for a moment, so I might as well check out that blueprint. 255 Ascendant Pump Shotgun. The durability's not crazy. I mean, 813's still good, but it's not crazy. It definitely put most of its, uh, like, investment into the weapon damage side, which is fine. I am fine with that. 255 damage for a shotgun is fucking awesome. So, I can think of quite a few uses for that, but just having that on my dude, like running around with that, it would be awesome. Because there's so many times we could jump by things that we need to take them out quickly. And especially for running caves, I can see this being super, super useful. So that was an awesome find. And it's really not crazy expensive either, outside of the polymer cost. The pace is not an issue, the metal's fine, we have like infinite metal with the Yankee. And the polymer, like I said, isn't terrible, but that's kind of costly. We also got a nice little Beelzebufu saddle, whatever the fuck you say their name. It's the frog. We got a frog saddle blueprint. Alright, so I'm pretty much just gonna hang out here until the trike tames, and then we're gonna head back to base. Five minutes later. You know what? Might as well loot the beaver dam while I'm here. You never fuck a gift horse in the mouth. That's what I always say. We got a lot of pearls, by the way. I don't know if you saw that when I had my inventory open or not, but that is a lot of pearls. We should be good for a little while. Okay, taming-wise, 97%. We are almost there, people. One more bite. Is it gonna happen when I still have the XP booster? Because that would kind of be awesome, actually. Come on. 13 seconds. 10 seconds. Please take another bite. Yes! Oh, look at that! Capitalized on that. Oh, what just happened? Did the server just crash? The server crashed! What? Okay, we loaded back in just fine. Um, I think the crash was just like Ark being Ark, so I'm, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Uh, we do gotta name this trike though. So, female Triceratops, 145. What can we come up with? Helen the Spike Crucible! Helen the Spike Crucible! Well, you know, I kind of did want a break from all the crazy video editing and stuff, but uh, given that we just tamed a level 145, you guys know what that means. Yeah! Absolute zero! Six trap! Hey, yo, man, I'm feeling thirsty! Oh no! I think I need some goddamn milk! <laughs> Helena Spike Crucible. She's undisputable. The stomp of her front feet is a foreshadow to future funerals. Right. Yeah, she's a trike, but don't you call her a third wheel or else she'll make you disappear like she was David Copperfield. Holds her head up high, her horns shimmer and shine. It's like it's Shanghai noon when she draws them pistols from her side. She's got a short fuse, so just call her Helen Wick, but there ain't no dog that passed away. She's just pissed off that things exist. She's thick and large, loud, proud, and in charge. Spiking death from far away just like an ice barrage. <laughs> Strutting no. across the yards and leaving bodies disarrayed She doesn't need to toot her horn when she's got three of them displayed oh, Charging down the beaches, leaving footprints in the sand Judge, jury, and executioner, he didn't stand a chance Oh, y'all weren't expecting that Alright, well now that that's out of the way, we might as well just pot her up and take her back to base. Because, like I said, I really don't have much of a need for a trike. Um, I might find out later that, you know, they're super awesome at something that I'm not sure about. But in this case of, like, playing solo, and we're not really, like, we're not raiding, we're not tanking turrets. Um, I've already got Athena and Brevin for gathering berries, so I don't really need a berry gatherer. 
Um, I don't really see much use for her. Outside of a grid and an awesome song. Okay. We are back to home sweet home. Let's dump our inventory of all those pearls and stuff that we gathered. And let's see what new grid that we just unlocked. Five minutes later. Alright, I think that is about everything sorted to where it needs to go. So let's tap out and unlock our new grid. Okay, we are back inside GIMP. I've already checked all the numbers and all the grids, so it's all set up properly. And I'm going to bring over the random number generator, which we have used a ton of times so far, but it has been a good while. I'm actually excited to do this because I haven't unlocked a grid in quite a long time. So, looking at the map before we do anything, the ones that we probably want the most are grid number 4, grid number 14, or grid number 16. Or number 1, it might be okay too, but those four grids are probably the most useful for us. I'm pretty sure that that cave I was talking about earlier with the Megatherium and all the bugs and stuff, I think that is grid number 4. If not, it's the one, like, right above it, but I'm pretty sure it's over there. And then 14 obviously just unlocks more redwoods for us, so we could maybe find more Megatherium. And number 1 unlocks a portion of that mountain that we can harvest, and 16 unlocks a big chunk of the Obsidian Mountain. So we could start to really, like, crank out Polymer, and potentially find some good Argents and stuff like that. So any of those grids are gonna be good. Cross your fingers. Here we go. Ten! Okay. I mean, it's not the worst grid to get. It's on the East Coast. You know, it doesn't really do a ton for us. But a grid's a grid, as I've always said. We will taketh as the island provideth. Mmm, I can't wait to get all up in this. Just gonna hoo-wee! Hoo-wee! Gonna, gonna make- Ow! Squeal like a pig! Yeah! We're gonna- Ow! We're gonna squeal like a pig! Ow! Okay, back in game. Let's open up our map. It looks like it is going to be 3585. So we'll do this, and let's see. It's gonna be number 30. So it's going to be 35, 85, pin number 30. Boom. Look at that. 30 grids, people. 30 grids. Well, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but this episode has been an insane success. We got ourselves two domesticated beehives. We got ourselves the start of a Megatherium army with an awesome female breeder. We got ourselves all the pearls that we're going to need for a long time. And we unlocked a level 145 trike that got us a new grid. This episode has just been fucking insane. And I am so happy that it turned out this good. So I was planning on finishing the wiring for the lights and everything, but this episode's already kind of getting long. So I think we're going to wrap it up here, and next episode, we are going to finish the wiring and the lighting and stuff in here. I might even start to convert this into metal, just because I think metal looks sweet. But, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what next episode has in store. But that is going to have to do it for this episode, people. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please head down below and give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please leave me comments because they warm my little bonnet heart. Thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you all next time.